Hey guys, thanks for uh, for joining us here today. Try to help you with anything. Any questions? We'll take our first question from Tom Canavan, Associated Press. Hey Greg, how you doing? Doing well, Tom. How are you? Good. You're halfway, pretty much halfway through uh, your spring practice. Are you? Have you expected more from a team that has a lot of returning kids, or are you know, are you just looking at it to see who knows what? Um, that's a good question, Tom. I don't think it falls into either one of those categories because there's so much that goes into spring practice. You have some guys that are recovering from injury, so they're not practicing. I have some other guys that have played, you know, in excess of 2,000 Big Ten snaps. So, you know, how much of them – how many reps am I going to give them in the spring? Uh, you know, I probably really have put a, a hold on them. So we, we have a lot of young guys mixed with more experienced guys. So sometimes that makes for a mixed result, which is fine as long as we can identify, you know, who the performers are uh, and that the young guys don't disturb the performance of some of the guys that we're trying to have an evaluation where there's a competition. Um, but at the end, I'm not sure that anything really gets decided in the spring. At least with me, it doesn't. I think that's what training camp is for. Spring is a developmental time. And to answer your original question, I'm encouraged, but we are definitely a work in progress, if that makes sense. There's been a lot of good things that I watch on the tape and I say, wow, that, that's good. That's, that's better than we were at any point last year. And then there's some things that I look at, it's just, oh my goodness, how could we still be making those, those kind of mistakes? Because some of these guys haven't done it, that's why. And you know, this is the first real reps we didn't have, and the thing that's lost, I think, on some is, we didn't have, forget have spring developmental, we didn't have training camp developmental. We immediately, you know, we had like four or five weeks to get ready for the season, we had never practiced together. So everything was about getting ready for the season. There wasn't a whole lot of developmental time. So this is a critical, critical time for us. That's why we pushed it back, um, even though it's not as convenient, because we needed to have this time. So again, encouraged, but work in progress would be the, would be the catchphrase, I think. James Cratch, NJ.com. Greg, I guess how have the quarterbacks looked so far? Evan, Cole, Johnny, Noah, what have you seen from them? Some good and some bad. I know that's well, what a cop-out answer that is, right? But uh, definitely have a better command of the offense, all of them. Um, Johnny has physically become, you know, Johnny's always been a physically developed guy. He's even more physically developed after this offseason. I think that uh, he's going to be a tough guy to tackle. Like I said earlier in the spring, he needs to be able to make certain throws to change the way defenses play us. I think he's on his way to doing that. He's made some progress in six practices. So that's going to be a really nice package that I think we can move forward with. Um, you know, with the rest of the guys, I think it's been steady, not spectacular, but not, not poor either, right? So here we are after six practices. I'm hoping to see, you know, with, with Cole and Evan, I'm hoping to see one of those guys really really take a jump. I think Noah has a real good understanding and feel for what we're doing. So I think what we'll try to do is get Cole and Evan a whole bunch of snaps here this week and see if one of them can't make a move. And then Austin Albariche, I always got to bring him up because he is, un he is really, really a great guy to have in our quarterback room. Very, very smart. Um, and when he gets his chances, he's done a nice job. So uh, I really like our room. Uh, I think that it's a good group, and I think Coach Gleason is doing a heck of a job with those guys. Going to go to Keith Sargent, NJ.com. Greg, a big theme of the NFL draft this past weekend were, uh, showed that teams um, you know, are almost trending toward positional uh, list um, players, uh, guys who could play uh, you know, all three levels on defense. And, and um, I know you were doing that uh, back in the day. I think Team Green uh, comes to mind as a guy who was able to do that. Looks at, I'm looking at your defense. It looks like you're kind of trending that way as well. Is that uh, something that you, you've kind of evolved in your thinking? Uh, can you just talk a little bit about just, you know, having as many multi-positional guys as possible? 
Let me get this straight. Are you talking, Keith, about the way that we've sometimes progressed guys from DB to linebacker, linebacker to DN, DN to inside sure. like that? Is that what yep, you're talking about? Levels. Yep. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. We've we've done that. You know, I think certainly it's not something that's going to go away. But if you can recruit players that are ready to play linebacker right out of the jump and have the same athleticism as those guys. The reason you did that back in the day is you have a guy who is an average athlete at one position. The day you move him to the other one, he's one of the best athletes in that position group. Because athletically, you just take a jump up the closer you get to the line of scrimmage. So my hope is that we can recruit guys that can play that position right from the jump because then you're starting at a you know remember like Kasim we didn't move him until I guess it was his sophomore season so if you start a guy that's a whole year maybe year and a half that he can get training at the position that he's going to play you have to be able to recruit to that it was kind of like the question last week about you know have I evolved from smaller faster linemen again if we could have had the bigger faster guys I would have been all for it we just we weren't able to get them so I think that's really the, the, the key is if we can recruit guys that are made for the position today, then we can jump right off and, and go with them and develop them even further. But we're not opposed to having to do that. I mean, we have experience of doing that. So um, we're going to have to play that by ear. It depends how well we recruit. Does that answer it, Keith? I think, I think that's what you're asking, right? Yep, that's good. Yep. Chris Eisman with Gannett. Greg, how has um, Josh Youngbud been uh, practicing? Has anything stood out uh, about what you've seen from him so far? You know, er, he's had a couple hamstring deals. So what we've seen, we've been impressed, but he's kind of been on again, off again. Um, so we got to make sure that we get him healthy so he can come in and have a great summer and compete. Uh, will he practice more this spring? I hope so. He did a little at the beginning, and then he was – so we'll see. We'll see how much, but he definitely in in what he showed, even at you know whatever he was, 80, 85 percent, he was he was impressive, explosive athlete. Bobby Darren, twenty four seven. Greg, uh, f Greg, for the spring, you used to give out the uh, most improved awards and, and, and various um, honorees. Is that coming back because they did away with that when you were gone? And also, what's your stance on captains this year and regarding when you're going to uh, name them? That's a good question. The captain's thing is every year a little bit different, the timing. And I haven't gotten quite the feel yet, but it, it, I would say probably earlier than later this year uh, as opposed to a year ago. Um, the awards, we are going to have the spring awards. I always thought that was a, a nice thing for the, for the guys to receive. Um, and it honored some guys that maybe otherwise wouldn't have that opportunity to be honored. So. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll bring those back. Going to go to Anthony Fusilli, Rutgers Radio Network. How you doing? Hey, Fooch. How are you? Uh, can you talk about two of your guys signing with the Jets, uh, Dump Four, and uh, also uh, what's it like to have a couple guys locally on the Jets and Giants? Well, uh, Mike Dwumfour and, and Brendan White, I was really happy for them. Uh, I knew that, uh, you know, they've been working hard in their training and uh, they both had, I think, pretty good pro days. And I think uh, the local team to have them here is, is cool. It's gonna be cool to have them. To, I'm sure they'll come train with us a little bit in their, in their downtime. They're two guys that uh, really, really helped us jumpstart the program, get it off the ground. Uh, I'm very close to both of them and I'm happy for them. And as, as I told them uh, when this process started, if you're not gonna get drafted by whatever you wanna use the cutoff, then you're better off being a free agent, right? Because you can get yourself in the best fit, the best opportunity to make the club. So I'm happy that uh, they both feel they're in a good situation and, uh, you know, really excited for them and wish them the best. Going to Richie Schneider with Rivals. Hey, Greg. So at the beginning of the spring, you said that the secondary has a chance to be good but needs some depth. Uh, recently, it looks like you guys moved Braden Fox over there. So what went into that move and how's the group developing as a whole? Well, I think they're developing. Um, we've had some injuries in the secondary. 
some guys that have not been able to get as many reps as, as really I wish they had. And then we have some guys that have a lot of experience that I really don't want to get uh, forced to have too many reps. I'm really encouraged by Patrice Rene. He's taken a lot of reps, a guy that is uh, obviously a transfer in from North Carolina. And um, he's taken very quickly to the culture, to our schemes. So I'm excited about that. We have some young guys that are participating. So overall, I'm pleased. Uh, we're down in numbers, and they really are toughing it out because, you know, defensive backs run pr probably the most on the team. It's wideouts or DBs, and that goes back and forth by practice. But when I look at all the, you know, all the data that's produced, you know, we have all the satellite stuff and the tracking. It's always the DBs and wideouts that, uh, that have the highest player load. So we really have to be careful because, as I said, we have – it's getting to be a substantial number of guys – that are that are banged up in one way or another in the secondary. So you got to be careful, otherwise you, you won't have enough to, to practice with. We're gonna go to Steve Politi, NJ.com. Hey Greg, do you have a pretty good idea of what your two deep would look like uh, for the fall at this point? And along those lines, are there any is there any one position where you know we could see more surprises as far as newcomers than the others? The two deep. It's a good question, Steve. I think I have a good idea what the two deep will look like. I'm not sure who would be the one and who would be the two, if that makes sense in a lot of places. So I think we have a great, some great competition in the offensive line, but I don't know who the starters are going to be. So there's going to be a real competition. I think we're going to have great competition in the defensive line. Um, so I think we'll have, we'll have some depth, but I don't know who the, who the quote unquote starters will be. Um, you know, and then there's other positions, I think, where we kind of have a pretty good feel of, you know, who the starters will be and who the, who the backups will be. So, yeah, to answer your question, in some areas, yes, in other areas, no. But I think I know who the – what the pool is for the ones and the twos. And, and really, you look for a pair and a spare. So it's like the ones, the twos, and the two-and-a-halves. You know, that's, what, that's really what gets on the plane. And uh, – that's kind of what I look at, right? 74 is a magic number as a head coach in the Big Ten because that's your travel squad. So that's what you can bring on the road with you. So when you start and you work back from there, you know, that, that kind of predicates. We obviously have a lot more than that on the team, but I try to fit it into that. You know, when you have home games, you can have a few more guys available to you, but I try to use 74 as that magic number. We're going to take a couple more questions. Going to go back to Anthony Fasilli, Rutgers Radio Network. Hey, Greg, you know, they, obviously they call it the Big Ten. Have you noticed, uh, we get to see some of the guys on Skype and they look bigger, but on the field, can you say, wow, there's a difference from what I saw at the beginning of last year? There is a noticeable difference, Fooch, and I agree with you. You know, I've said that exact line to the guys. You know, they don't call it the Little Ten, right? So it's the Big Ten. We need to have big people. And we need to be able to play and, and, and operate at a high level of speed with big people. And that's what Coach Butler's the best at. He understands more than any I've been around that football's a game of movement and change of direction. So we can get them big, but they better be able to change direction and move quickly. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. It's good for, a, you know, a, a, I guess, a stare off, right, when you look at each other. But uh, we got to move and change direction. That's the key to playing the game of football. And I feel like we. We are bigger and stronger, but I, I feel like we're moving better too. So that's that's winning on all fronts. We got to keep that up. Um, you know, we're training through spring football. You know, the one thing that's a little different, Fooch, is that you know we're we're entering final exams on Wednesday. So this is real. You know, and we're going to be doing spring practice. So it's really we really got to be aware of our players' time, and we're also in a stage now which, if spring ball had gone off the regular timing our guys would finish their fall their spring exams and they'd be free to go they'd go home and spend some time you know wherever wherever they where they're going to return well we're practicing all the way to the to the what's the spring game the 20th I guess or the 17th I forget what the date is of the spring game but that's all time that we're usually not working we really got to be careful I told the team we're going to be very very uh, aware of what we're asking you to do during this time period because they come back for summer training. They have to have their bodies ready to go. So, um, I, you know, it's really been a challenge for us, this, this whole pushing it back. But it was the right thing to do. I still would do it. 
uh, because these guys need to get the work, and some of them would not have been able to had we gone on time. So we're going to be respectful. You know, the final exams, make sure they have opportunities to prepare physically, make sure that we're not, you know, pushing them right to the brink, and then they get a week, and then they're back in summer. There's a lot of, a lot of balls to keep in the air, but uh, overall I like where we stand right now physically. We're going to go to James Cratch with the final question. Great. How do your special teams look so far? Good, Cratch. We, we've worked on two of them, right? Or three of them. So three of the six. So four of them. Uh, I, I better do a better job of my math. We've worked on four of the special teams. And, um, you know, it's always interesting when you have experienced guys that aren't going or going in a limited fashion. So now young guys are getting into, because special teams, as I've said to you guys before, unless you're a specialist, nobody comes to Rutgers to be the left guard on the kickoff return team. Like that's just no one's goal and it's not what guys think about. So you really got to work to teach them that and to have them retain that information. Um, and we have some new guys doing it. So. Overall, I'm very encouraged because we have our schemes in place and we're adding some things and subtracting some things that, that the off-season studies uh, showed. But uh, I, we have a lot of people that are getting looks that haven't gotten looks, so that's good as well. Uh, but I'm encouraged as far as the special teams because you know how important that is to us and to us winning games. So and before we jump here, guys, uh, I'd be remiss if uh, I didn't, Send our condolences, not only mine, but our entire football program. Uh, Bob Mulcahy, our, my athletic director, my first go here, uh, his wife Terry passed away. And our thoughts and prayers uh, go out to his family, from our family. Bob and Terry were such a huge part of building this football program and this athletic department as a whole. So, again, our thoughts and prayers go out to them. I appreciate uh, your time, appreciate you coming over, and uh, look forward to seeing you next week.